Hello everyone and welcome back to Microsoft Flight Sim 2020 where there's a sale going on in the in-game marketplace, the spring sale, leading to much temptation and I have succumbed to a small piece of temptation, a very small piece in fact, the smallest jet plane in the world, the BD-5J. I've been eyeing this for quite a while because it is a unique plane, it's a, a kit plane, there's a home-built plane, uh, you get the plans and you, know, you get the parts and, well, you can't get the parts anymore, it's from the 1970s and uh, the company went defunct so you can't build them anymore but uh, there are a few still flying around it is a reasonably dangerous plane uh, it's got a one kilonewton jet engine in the back originally the airframe was built for a propeller engine in the back but they decide that's the BD-5 the regular BD-5 has a propeller engine in the back and then they made this BD-5J the J for jet uh, making a little jet engine in the back and then it has become sort of a uh, well it's gone down in history, let's put it that way. Uh, it appears in some racing circuits and stuff like that, uh, or air shows and stuff like that. So yeah, it is particular model is made by Azure Poly. Azure Poly has their own little livery here. And it is currently going for just, five, uh, sorry, $7, $7. So uh, not too bad, we'll see how it goes. But it is tiny, it is so tiny that even though I am 155 pounds, uh, I cannot actually fully fuel it, <laughs> um, uh, so forget baggage, uh, yeah, I can only go to 82%, so yeah, there we are. Uh, let's see how it goes though, maybe, uh, I wonder, does it let me, uh, let's, let's see if I can take off with this at uh, 920 pounds. 920 pounds fully fueled, empty weight 430 pounds, let's see. Yeah, you see down there, uh, it had a little comment there that uh, 5,000 kits were sold, but only a few hundred were actually built. Now, part of the reason was because the company went out of business, uh, so the parts were not available for some of the kits that were originally sold. The lightest version of the BD-5J actually is only 358.8 pounds without fuel, so ours is a little bit on the heavy side. <laughs> Okay, we're flying at Cleveland, which I think it was the home of uh, uh, BD Air Corporation. I assume it's uh, pronounced BD because the plane is pronounced BD. Uh, who knows? So there's the cockpit, and it's got this uh, little Azure Poly pad, but we can close that. Uh, we can uh, click on this EFB button to bring it up again, but it's not like it does much except for show us a map. Though the map is a whole lot better than the regular in-game map, so there is that. Uh, we can just also click the button to get rid of it. And otherwise, it's sort of a racing plane kind of cockpit. And yep, well, let's take a look at the oh, well, uh, side panels. There's nothing really. I mean, this is a very spare sort of plane, as you might expect. And outside, we've got this livery right now. That nose landing gear, though, that's interesting. It is so low. But then you wouldn't want a very heavy landing gear on this, would you? Lots of rivets. Okay, so that is the condition of it. Uh, I think the the canopy reflection is a little bit overdone, but I'm sure it's realistic and all, but uh, yeah, <laughs> I still don't need it, but uh, that much. It's got in an interesting sound to it. And it's wiggly on the ground. It, it's very wiggly on the ground. Uh, I'm having to use full right right now. Uh, I'm still using mostly right, and we can probably take off. Okay. Yeah, and that's probably because of the wind, of course. But it's so small, it's very subject to such things. Okay, gear up. Not much of a gear sound. Flaps up. I've already flown it once. It is very, very, very stable. Uh, perhaps more stable than I would have expected, considering its size and such. I would like it to be less stable. <laughs> uh, it, it, it's, uh, it's a fairly dangerous sort of plane. I mean, it, it feels like it ought to be a little bit more dangerous, but it actually is very easy to fly. It is aerobatic. Uh, you know, it can do quite a lot. You can see inside here, we've got a acceleration dial that goes from 
10 to negative 4, and I've actually pushed it to negative 4 without it dying or anything. Didn't quite get it up to 10, I only did 6. It's tough to pull really high G's when you're, you know, slower. And th this gets up to 260 knots, but it's not a speed demon. For its size, it's a speed demon. Same company uh, made a BD-10 that they marketed as the as the first home-built supersonic aircraft. It, it looked like an F-15 kind of thing. Uh, the catch is uh, five were built. Of those, three crashed and two were unflyable. <laughs> so, not a particularly safe plane there either. Mind you, a lot of the problem with uh, home-built planes is they are home-built, so you know quality checks aren't quite there. So it's not entirely the fault of the designer or manufacturer of the parts necessarily, uh, but plenty of the B-5Js also have succumbed to crashes. So you can certainly sightsee in this. And, you know, there is the basics. The fuel gauge is there. The fuel flow is very prominent, so you can manage your fuel properly. If you're going on tour, but it doesn't have a huge range. I mean, it's not a bad range though, uh, assuming the specs are correct. I think it can get uh, nearly a thousand miles, uh, regular miles, not nautical miles, maybe 800 nautical miles or so. But okay, uh, putting it through its paces, it's got some uh, high G sound effects, as you hear. It uh, grumbles about things. So, going negative Gs. Didn't have much problem getting off the ground above the maximum takeoff weight. Well, I'm gonna try the inverted outside loop. This is not a thing that planes generally like to do. Oh, it did it! It managed it! That is a high negative G maneuver. So it's tough for planes to do. Uh, it doesn't seem like this plane is likely to break on you. But uh, one thing is it it's sort of a little bit too fly-by-wire and it very much sticks to its position instead of having the sort of natural sort of return to stable flight kind of thing. I do like the wobbliness as it gets to high speed and the fluttering and all that business. But following a road is pretty easy with this because it's very stable actually. And so maneuverable and small. Your only wish would be that the AI traffic was more sort of realistic in the way they moved. Maybe the overpasses, but yeah. Well, if you want to really fly below a road real close, this is the plane to do it in. Well, one of the planes to do it in. So yeah, you can have plenty of fun with this. I'm gonna have plenty of fun with it. The question is whether I dare to fly this sort of thing around the world. Hmm. I've got a lot of planes that are candidates. Got a lot of planes that are candidates. This uh, is a lot of fun around here, but how is it going to be like flying across an ocean or something? Wonder if it has air brakes at all. I doubt it. Yeah, no air brakes, and not a surprise. After all, this is a light aircraft. Uh, nothing extra. 
Granted, uh, you're gonna have to deal with the fact that it sounds like a vacuum cleaner or something. Like a home appliance. Okay, gear down. Oh, it's got a lot of drag right now, that's for sure. And we're still heavy for it. We're still probably beyond the maximum takeoff weight considering the fuel I put in. So we'll see how it does on landing, given that. So, here it is. Obviously not a... Obviously not an ideal approach here, but... Yep, yep. And... Come on. Okay, we are down. Oh... Uh... Okay. Let's see if we can get off here. Ah. One, two, yep, I'm needing to fly a lot to get anywhere to the right. <laughs> okay. And off we go. So, okay, there you have it the BD5J by Azure Poly. So with that, I'll say thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed this video, if you did please do press like, if you have any comments or suggestions please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.